Hello everyone and welcome to the Walkthrough Wednesday video where in this video we're going to be walking through the typical FizzBuzz problem that you might encounter in a technical interview question like a whiteboard interview or you may see it in a coding challenge assessment that you would be actually doing as part of applying for a software development position. So the problem that we're going to be walking through in basic JavaScript is um, just writing a program that prints out the numbers from 1 to 100. And so immediately you're going to be thinking about maybe console logging or printing something. We've written a basic print function to already do that. But for multiples of three, then you need to print fizz instead of the number. For multiples of five, you need to print buzz instead of the number. And for multiples of three and five, you need to print fizz buzz instead of that number. So we're going to jump right in and I'll let David take that the helm for that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one thing to realize here is that the this prompt, that if it comes up in an interview, usually it's language agnostic. So it doesn't really matter which language you choose to solve this problem in. It is an algorithm. So they're looking to make sure that you know how to program, you know which steps to code, no matter which language you use. In this example today, we're going to be using plain vanilla JavaScript uh, linked to an index.html file so we can see the results in a browser. And as Jackson mentioned, I've already written this print function, which I can call, and it's going to put uh, whatever I pass into that function on the screen where we can see it, instead of tucking it away in the developer console. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And there are many different ways of solving this problem. Uh, so this isn't the only way. And also, I'm not going to go ahead and do it correctly to begin with. I'm going to talk about some common pitfalls people fall into when they're solving this problem for the first time. So to attack this piece by piece, write a program that prints the numbers from 1 to 100. So to do that, we're going to need a loop, right? Uh, if you start manually printing numbers yourself, you're not going to get that job. They, they're <laughs> looking for you to use a loop at that point. So uh, for me, I'm going to use a for loop. So for let i equal, I can do 1. So I'm going to start with 1. Continue while i is less than 101. And i plus plus. OK. So I've got that loop. And uh, you know, just to prove that's working, um, you know, as we're going through, uh, let's see. Write a program that prints the numbers from 1 to 100. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to print i. So I'm calling that print function that I've written down here already. So let's just try to solve this in baby steps. So we have one, we're going all the way to 100. Okay, so that seems simple enough. We've got that part working, but that isn't what we were asked to do. We were asked to, sure, do this, but if it's divisible by three, it needs to say something else instead of the number. Same thing for five, same thing for three and five. So let's start thinking of how we might do that. So it says, but for multiples of three, print fizz instead of the number. So now we're in this, it says instead of, we're in this either or situation. So Jackson, what kind of you know, programming tool do we use when we have an either or scenario? Yeah, so that's gonna, that language, that comparison is going to immediately uh, invoke a, a conditional statement. So you're gonna want to check if that number is actually a multiple of three or a multiple of five. And so you're gonna, want to immediately start thinking about, well, how can I use a conditional or if else statement to tackle this problem? Right. So let's just do this piece by piece right now. So I'm going to say if, so I want to say if it's a multiple of three. So what kind, how can, you know, in programming, how can you determine if something is evenly divisible by a particular number? Well, you can use the modulus of something divisible by three. Right. So there are a few different ways of doing it, but one of these, one of the most popular ways would be using the modulus operator. So that's the percent symbol in JavaScript. So if I and then mod three is exactly equal to zero. So what that means if is if you take whatever number I is, so one, two, three, so on and you divide it by three, if it has a remainder of zero, that's what we're asking ourselves here. So is this evenly divisible by three? If that's the case, we're going to print fizz. Else, we might want to print uh, the number, right? That's what we were doing before. 
So again, this isn't the full solution. So I've saved this and now I'm going to go check it out in my browser. So one, two, all right, three is fizz instead of the number, four, five, and then six. So we've got part of this, but we don't have all of it. So maybe the next thing I want to attack is five, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, at this point, we haven't really set ourselves up for success here because where do I do it? Do I come down here and do another if statement? Uh, so at this point, we want to consider all of the possibilities. And really, there are four possibilities here. So either the number is a multiple of just three, or the number is a multiple of just five, or the number is a multiple of three and five, or it's just any other case. Mm -hmm. So that's four possibilities that we need to check for. So what we might try doing is uh, a lot of people will try to solve this problem in order that it's given. So you might do something like this. Um, you know, maybe you'll do print i out here, and then you'll say, all right, if it's evenly divisible by three, we're going to print fizz. Uh, we'll use an else if it's evenly divisible by five. We're going to uh, print buds. All right. And then finally, maybe we'll have an else if um, it's i. So this if, is if it's evenly divisible by 3 um, and it is evenly divisible by 5. So if the remainder when dividing by 3 is 0 and the remainder when dividing by 5 is 0. So that means it's evenly divisible by both 3 and 5. In that case, we would print fizzbuzz. So, you know, this might be where you end up going, because if you look at it, that's kind of the same order that it was given to you in the problem. But let's see what happens. So I'm going to save this and then go take a look in my browser and refresh the page. And I have one, two, and then I have three, and then I have also fizz, and then four, five, fizz, or buzz, six. Uh, here's 15 but I don't ever see fizz buzz mm -hmm. showing up. So something's not quite right here. And uh, this has to do with the way that if, else if, else if, and else, they all work. So when you have a chain of these, like if, else if, else if, uh, we go into the first one that matches, right? And then we don't continue down the chain. So also this is a problem because there's that instead of, right? It says instead of the number. This, because it's not in a conditional, it's not in an if or an else, it's always going to happen. So we can't do this. Um, so first, we might try to fix this by saying else print i. And then we'll get rid of this line right here. So we're getting there. This is a little closer. This is if it's divisible by 3, do this. 5, do this. Both, do this. In all other cases, so it's not divisible by any of this stuff, then we're just going to print the number. So at this point, if I save it and go, right, so 3 is replaced, um, 5 is replaced, 6, we keep going. But 15 should say fizz buzz because mm -hmm. it's divisible by both 3 and 5. So, you know, why do you think that's the case? Why aren't we making it here to fizz buzz? Yeah, so you've got to satisfy both the multiple of 3 and 5 condition for fizz buzz to be printed. But you're never getting to that point because you're satisfying the either or situation with either three or five, it being a multiple of three or five, before that is ever executed. That code block for else if for fizzbuzz is never, it's never entered because you're printing either fizz or buzz before that happens. So when you have more than one condition like this, you want to make sure that that's executed first to check if it satisfies both of those conditions and then continue down that conditional chain mm -hmm. yeah so like jackson said this is this actually is technically unreachable code because uh if it were divisible by three we would go into this if statement and then this chain would stop we wouldn't keep going if it's divisible by five we would go into here so by definition anything that would make us go into this else if prevents us from getting to this else if. so it's kind of a it's, a, it's an interesting problem, but the takeaway point is that if you have really specific cases like this, you should put those higher up in your if-else-if statements. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to remove, I'm going to cut this if statement and I'm going to put it up at the top. And then I will turn this into an else if statement. Got to clean this up a little bit. Uh, so now what we have is first we say if it's divisible by both 3 and 5, print fizzbuzz. Otherwise, if it's just divisible by 3, print fizz. Otherwise, if it's just divisible by 5, print buzz. And finally, all other cases, let's just fall back to the default and print the number. So this should be, you know, what the prompt is looking for. So we've got 3, 5, 6, um, 15 shows up as fizzbuzz. So this is working now. Uh, so this is just a, a perfect example of something you really have to think about and reason out logically. Uh, a lot of people get tripped up by this, um, and it, it just goes to show you that not uh, not every time will you your code line up exactly with the order that your steps are given to you in the prompt. So this one in particular, it's kind of written to trick you, and you want to follow that order, but you, you can't follow that order. It has to be something more along the lines of this. Mm -hmm. And just to reiterate, this is not the only way to solve this problem. There are shortcuts that you could take. You could shorten this code with like ternary operators. You could use um, like number theory to shorten it as well. Um, you could even use different languages. The algorithm is the thing that you have to really understand here though. Like how do you take this, this word problem and then understand an algorithm to solve it? with a programming language. And in this case, we've chosen JavaScript in a pretty standard way, but it, this isn't the only way you can do that. And so play around with this problem, try to uh, make it your own and really understand it. And that way, if you ever encounter it in a technical interview, or if you ever see it in a coding assessment, then you can already use that knowledge of the algorithm to solve it immediately and really impress whoever, whoever wants you to solve it. Yeah, and that knowledge that you brought up is important. It's not enough to just be able to write the code. They're going to ask you about it, right? They're going to ask you to reason through it, why you put things in this very specific order. So it's really important that you, you know, actually know what's going on there. Yeah. So that's it for this Walkthrough Wednesday. If you like this video, uh, you know, give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel or check out our other videos on YouTube. And we will catch you next week.